Aloha everyone, what is going on my dudes? Today is September 1st, 2020. We got another RuneScape update for y'all. Today we see the 10th Ninja Strike, this time focusing on crystal chests and broadcasts. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Let's go. Cats is the illest. What you talking about, Willis? Alright guys, starting off with broadcasts, broadcasts can now be toggled on and off with the options found under settings, and then messages and social, and then broadcasts. Different kinds of broadcasts can be toggled, and by default all broadcasts are turned on. The broadcast settings is split between world, friends, and clan. Turning a broadcast setting off will still let the player see their own broadcast, but not other players' broadcasts of that type. Various broadcasts have also been reviewed and had their tier adjusted. If you look here, you can see the various different tiers. Note that the lower the number of tier, the more people it is broadcasted to. So tier 1 will broadcast to all worlds and your clan, where tier 4 will broadcast to nobody, meaning the broadcast has been removed. And here is a list of the various items that have been changed in terms of their broadcast. Once again, do note that if the new tier is a higher number than the previous tier, that means it broadcasts to less people. Once again, a higher number means it is less important. And you could pause the video at any point just to look at the various items that have had their broadcast changed. Some of them have gone up in importance and some have gone down to the point where they've been completely removed. Moving on, I want to talk about reward chests and looting. A new toggle has been added to the reward chest interface which allows players to loot items in noted and unnoted form. Crystal chests and Triskelion keys now use the standard reward chest interface from which items can be banked directly. The animation delays on chests have been removed for a smoother opening experience. Multiple players can now use reward chests at the same time. Various improvements have been made to reward chest messaging, including dialogue and info boxes. And minor balancing changes have been made to the Triskelion key loot. The 125 adamant and 750 coal stone spirits drop is now 15 bainite stone spirits, and the 40 runite and 320 coal stone spirits is now 5 light and 5 dark anamica stone spirits. And combining Triskelion key parts will now combine as many as possible in one action. And that is it for the Ninja Strike. We're going to shift on over to the patch notes and see what's been changed with today's update. So let's go check it out. Starting off with the Alchemical Hydrix, they've made an improvement. The Essence of Finality ability will now appear in the Constitution ability book when the filter is enabled. And a couple of fixes, they resolved some issues where the effect of portable skilling stations was not being triggered by the brooch of the gods, fixed a visual issue that appeared when changing attack styles after using the Essence of Finality ability, and an issue has been fixed that was allowing some weapon special attacks to be used without spending adrenaline. Moving on to other changes, we got some improvements. The Order of Dis and Infernal Source music tracks now loop as expected, and you can now toggle the warnings that appear when decanting flasks. You can find the option under the Skills and Interface menu in the Herb Lore section. Moving on to some fixes, the flowing blood in Demonheim is no longer stripey. No longer possible to trigger the No Secrets Left to Steal achievement multiple times. The Calm Waters buff will be removed as expected when the Sign of Life is triggered during the Masuda boss fight in the Temple of Amanishi. Edward the Cape Seller will no longer appear in the Spirit Realm. You can now progress You Are Not My Real Ma even when donating more Elder Chronicles than required. Hit Chance modifiers have been recalculated right after the Stagger spell, Confuse spell, or the Sandstorm Camel debuff hits the target in PvP. Fixed an issue with the Worn Equipment tab, become persistently unavailable after summoning a pet in Death's office. Fixed the bug that caused a report interface to remain open after choosing a reason to report the offending player. The lever graphics inside the Ashdale sewers have now been fixed. Viewing orb information will no longer display if the orb was used in previous court cases. Added force approach to ladders in Yanel's Dragon Inn, Sithix Int's House, Frankenstrain's Castle, and Melzar's Maze. The Melzar's Maze ladder is also no longer positioned in front of a murder hole in the adjacent wall. The Reaper Necklace ornament no longer grants stacks when hitting a combat dummy Mark II, bringing it in line with the standard Reaper Necklace. Modifier values are now recalculated when familiars are summoned and dismissed. Using the Dwarven Fish Extractor on a crystallized fishing spot no longer requires bait. 
FPS should no longer drop rapidly when curing a plant at the Livid Farm on Lunar Isle. Fix then issues with cannons triggering on-kill effects despite being far away. The portable workbench will now allow you to craft flat packs with a full inventory of planks by swapping one or more of your planks for the finished flat pack. And finally, there's a hotfix where the Traveling Artisan now gives out inactive, unused variants of the Dwarven tools instead of the active variant with no charges. That is it for your patch notes. Links to everything discussed in this video will be down in the description below. Head on over there to check them out. With that, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things Whiskey Blade, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Aloha.